welcome to backbenchers i hope everything is going well with you all and i hope you all are fine we would like to apologize to you all for being so late for uploading the videos we had some unavoidable reasons that we could not exclude hence we couldn't upload our videos anyways we finished with the lesson one of transpiration in today's video we are going to be discussing about lesson two let us quickly have a look into the chapter division see we are done with lesson one completely so lesson one is completely done all finished lesson two i have again made it as part one and part two i forgot writing it as writing it as part one and part two and when i was making the slides i realized that it would be better for you all to be having two parts of this particular lesson so we are going to be finishing lesson two in two parts this one is part one and then adaptations this portion is part two today's video is going to be about part one definitely and then these are the rest of the lessons there are total six lessons and at the last we have the doubt class please whatever doubts you're having write it down in the comment section and we will reach out to you all at the end of this chapter in the doubt class okay let us move forward with today's session we will discuss about lenticular and cuticular transpiration in today's session it is going to be a very small session very simple session to understand so make sure you get and understand all the portions very nicely you have the clear idea of what is lenticular and what is cuticular transpiration and then after finishing the portion if you have any doubt remaining please write it down in the comment box let us begin with cuticular transpiration now cuticular transpiration basically involves cuticles cuticles in plants have a different meaning and cuticles in animals have a different meaning in animals cuticle is basically a proteinaceous covering in our nails that we find in our nails we have cuticle and then on the tips we have cuticle but in plants cuticle has a separate meaning so first we will know about what is a cuticle we will know about what is the meaning of a cuticle you have read about cuticle in the junior classes but still let me repeat it again once it is basically a waxy hydrophobic layer present on the surface of the leaves it provides protection against desiccation and external environmental stresses okay so here's a term which says hydrophobic layer now in science in biology or in any part of science or in anywhere if you get this term hydrophobic then hydrophobic means repelling water that is not having a strong affinity or attraction of attraction for water whenever there is something which says phobic then that means repelling or unattracting we can say and whenever there is the term which is philic that means attracting when we were talking about osmosis when we discussed the previous chapter uh, at that chapter when we were discussing about imbibition there was this term as hydrophilic i used the term hydrophilic hydrophilic means having a strong affinity for water attracting or affinity for water and hydrophobic means which repels the water like it is opposite just the opposite of each other one is repelling and the other means attracting so phobic means repelling and philic means attracting or pulling closer something like that so hydrophobic layer means layer which prevents water layer which prevents water just a second layer prevents water that is it cannot or it does not allow water to pass through itself does not allow 
allow water. So cuticle is that particular layer which is hydrophobic in nature and it is basically present on the upper surface of the leaves. So where there can be fine cuticle present on the, if this is a point, then we can write it here, that it is present on the upper surface of leaves. upper surface of leaves and it is present on the lower surface as well basically it is upper surface otherwise it is present in the lower surface as well basically it is present above the epidermal layer it is present above the epidermal layer okay what it does is it provides protection against desiccation now desiccation is another new term desiccation means water loss let me write it here desiccation means desiccation means loss of water provides desiccation means it uh, it provides desiccation means it prevents loss of water provides protection against desiccation means loss of water that is what is mean desiccation so cuticle is that particular layer which is a waxy which is waxy in nature and it is hydrophobic layer so if it is hydrophobic then it will definitely prevent loss of water it is present on the surface of the leaves and it provides protection against environmental stresses as well environmental stresses you don't have to put much attention to this term right now all you have to know is it is a waxy hydrophobic layer which is present on the surface of the leaves and it provides desiccation now let us have a look into the position of the cuticle see in this diagram we have we are familiar with this diagram in the previous lesson only we discussed about this diagram this layer is the palisade mesophyll layer this longitudinal cells these are the spongy mesophyll cells then these are intercellular spaces these these are veins these are lower epidermal layer and then these are again palisade layers and these are stomatal openings now above the palisade mesophyll layer there is a layer which says as epidermis you can see clearly that this layer is epidermis and above the epidermal layer we have the cuticle that is this region is the cuticle you can see it is shiny in nature it is shiny waxy smooth silky you can use these terms and the most important term, term is hydrophobic so this is the position of the cuticle now transpiration taking place through cuticle is known as cuticular transpiration as simple as that let me just write it here transpiration taking place through the cuticular opening or through the cuticle is known as cuticular transpiration. Very simple thing to understand. No simple, no, 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 no sort of rocket science is present here. Transpiration taking place through cuticle is known as cuticular transpiration. How does cuticular transpiration look? This is how cuticular transpiration look. Cuticle is present on this surface of the leaves. It is present here. So when transpiration is going to take place, water droplets will be visible. You see this diagram. Water droplets you can see. That is basically transpiration. Water droplets are here because transpiration has taken place. That is why. Another example, if you want to take this example, this is a very beautiful diagram actually. This is diagram number two. And this is diagram number one. These are the few examples of how 
they look in real life how does cuticular transpiration look in real life basically they will look in the form of water droplets water droplets will be visible on the surface of the leaves that is how we can recognize that cuticular transpiration has taken place now that was all about cuticular transpiration the next thing that we are left to discuss is lenticellular or lenticular transpiration i prefer calling it lenticellular transpiration because the single term is lenticels so it is anything you want to call it lenticular lenticellular i prefer calling it lenticellular transpiration now again for understanding lenticellular transpiration we have to understand what are lenticels lenticels are basically openings that develop in the bark of older plants in place of stomata bark means what bark means basically the outer hard covering outer rough hard okay let me just write it at the top it is the outer rough hard covering of the stem that we usually see covering of the stem of the plant that we usually see which is brown in color that particular covering is called the bark of the plants now in case of older plants these bark develop certain amount of or some number of openings which openings are known as lenticels now these openings are uh, formed in the place of stomata that is they are formed replacing the stomata stomata is present in the leaves but in older plants certain openings are present in the stems as well and that openings are known as uh, lenticels but the function of those openings are more or less similar to that of stomata because they are also openings and they can also perform gaseous exchange hence any sort of transpiration taking place through these openings are known as lenticellular transpiration so let me write that for you when transpiration takes place when transpiration takes place through the lenticellular openings it is called lenticellular transpiration now unlike uh, cuticular transpiration i cannot show you all how does lenticellular transpiration looks because when lenticellular transpiration takes place water droplets are not formed water droplets are not formed it is a gaseous exchange gases might come out and we cannot see gases so i cannot show i couldn't find a diagram that can show you all that how this lenticellular transpiration takes place but it is a gaseous exchange just the way transpiration takes place through stomata the same way transpiration takes place through lenticels there is one advantage of lenticels over stomata what is that what is that advantage if you all can point then is going to be helpful so advantage of stom of lenticels over stomata is that they remain open all the time they never close stomata depends on the presence of sunlight stomata depends on the presence of sunlight depends on the presence of sunlight but lenticels do not depend on the presence of sunlight lenticels always remain open always remain open 
they always remain open and therefore at night plants can perform plants can perform transpiration through the lenticels so it is a big advantage for the plant previously we used to think that stomatas stomata remain closed during the night so plants can only perform transpiration at the day but no this doesn't happen because lenticels are also present on the bark of the plants which remain open during both day and night through lenticels so lenticels remain open during both day and night remain open both day and night that is a big advantage of lenticels over stomata so now it is clear to you all that what is lenticels what are lenticels and what is lenticular lenticellar transpiration now let us have a look into how does lenticels look in actual plants this is how lenticels look these small openings are basically lenticels you can see these openings okay let me use black color black color will help you to see in a better way these openings you can see i'm just over marking them again these openings are known as lenticels and through these openings lenticellular transpiration takes place another example if you want to take these are even bigger see these are bigger in size these openings are bigger in size these openings are bigger in size these are the lenticels in the bark and this structure that you see on which the lenticels are present this is known as the bark of the plant bark of what type of plant bark of older plants okay let me write in this in the diagram number 1 this thing is the bark of older plant they develop lenticels in place of stomata so lenticels in place of stomata are developed i hope everything is clear the today's portion was very uh, simple and easy portion to understand there was nothing hard there was just theory part and it was really interesting and fun to understand that there are types of transpiration as well and these structures are also present in plants which actually perform transpiration so it was pretty interesting so that was all about today's session i hope you have understood everything well if you have not understood then please uh write down your doubts in the comment box share this video if you found out this to be useful with your fellow backbenchers subscribe to this channel for more further amazing videos stay tuned please like share and also subscribe and comment your doubts till then stay happy stay blessed take care peace